okay so what we've done we've actually got the cockpit all put on as we said we've actually added this nose area in here just like this um, and filled that up and sanded that in smooth pretty much straightforward we've also added the little bump on the nose there um, so what we can actually do now we want to spray this black so it shows through as being black so what we're going to do we're just going to take our airbrush I've got some already thinned black paint here I was getting a little bit low in the bottle so I've actually added some thinners to it so it's not as thick as we would normally perhaps spray on so we're going to spray a little bit of a higher air pressure and just lightly build it up so we we'll just check our spray first and there's our spray coming through very nicely so what we do we just make sure the canopy is all fitted correctly and then we're just lightly going to blow in this so then when we come back for pre-shading and certainly priming and that we won't have a funny grey colour to the cockpit now it's going to take a little bit more to build up than normal because I said this is already pretty thin so we'll just build it up quite lightly and then when we've got some paint on it we can come back and build it up a little thicker drive this back a little bit <coughs> and we come back give this another coat so really what we want to do is make sure we can't see anything through this at all so we're just drying these down okay and we'll just work our way around the front And obviously the other thing as well as doing this, you can actually see um, how your canopy is fitting and if you've got any nasty joins and things like that, then obviously you can just come along now and fill those in. So there we go, we're out of paint there. So we'll just pop this one out of the way a moment, just like that. Okay, caps on. And there we go, so that's showing, you know, obviously a nice black totally done canopy something like that so that takes care of that we'll let that dry off we can whip it off make sure we're all okay but just looking around close up at the details of it it all looks like it's all in there nicely we've just got a nice little line running down the canopy is actually a very good fit just that groove at the front you know which obviously just slide it back into its position and that gives us our nice effect so i'm quite happy with the way that's turned out we're going to let that dry it totally off then what we're going to do we're going to repaint this front area um, obviously for this intake and give that a, a white look down in there and just a bit of a spray round so we're all happy with the way it's looking and it's all nice and smooth and things like that and then what we can actually do is get some primer on this and really start to get it together okay so the next thing we can get on with is some priming now we've primed up obviously these uh, the wing areas they're all roughly primed up and all done so we could check for obviously panel lines and things like that they're all done very happy with those so what we do with get them out of the way in a minute <clears throat> there is some little bits and pieces around but I'm not really worried about that what we need to do really is get this fuselage all sort of primed up all ready and then we can get some paint on it and really sort of move on with the build so what we're going to do we're going to just use some um, I've got some Tamiya here XF53 um, the reason for using this is you know usual thing with me I've just got lots of it around so that will do so what we do we're just going to give this a good old shake get the compressor online and coming up to speed so we'll, do, we'll just open this up a little bit just to catch a little bit of overspray which we're bound to make. Okay, thinners goes in first. So we've still got that black in there floating around but as I say it's only a primer so I'm not worried about it. 50-50 mix. So I'm just going to colour cut like that. Obviously if it's a little bit thicker um, it gives a more rougher texture. So if you want a rough texture to your paintwork, a very flat finish, make it a little bit thicker. If you want it more glossy, uh, just make it a little bit thinner. 
there we go, that's done like that. So obviously we'll just check out, we've got a bit of a problem with the needle sitting funny here. So we'll just undo the back collet, which is this one here. We undo that and then all we do is let the needle naturally flow into its position and then tighten it up again. That goes on. Happy with the spray, so all we're going to do is try not to shoot directly in because that canopy, it naturally wants to lift up, so there's a bit of a gap in it. So all we do, we'll start at the front. So as always say, really what we're doing at this point is we're looking out for nasty lines, panel lines which don't look right or add up. And what we're really doing is this will give a nice even uh, texture for things like the pre-shading and obviously the main paintwork to stick to. I'm not going to go blowing right down into the intake, we're just going to circumnavigate that one just a little bit. So that's what we do. Oh, a bit of a spit there, which is just where the paintwork has actually uh, run down the side of the colour cup because it is extremely full, a little bit fuller than I would normally like. And that big spit is just where it hit the end. So that's totally my fault. Okay, so we just do the other side. Okay, so what I'll do in a moment, I'll just carry on finishing it off, but as we can see at the moment, we're very happy. We've got no seam lines at all, absolutely anywhere um, from well, obviously the joins and that. They've all gone. All the panel lines looking very, very nice. We've got no problem. We're seamless along the belly and along the front and everything else like that. So what I'll do is I'll just carry on finish priming it up. Okay, so the primer's all completely dry. We're nice and smooth. Now what we've actually done is gone along really and have a good look at, at the seam lines. Um, obviously we've got the major players um, down the back here. It's going to be very noticeable about here. Obviously we've got the run around the nose area. We want to make sure that one's all nice and smooth. And also, um, just important really, the ones on the underside to make sure they're all okay. Also, we're looking for any really big jaggedy parts, um, some bad spray, things like that, any joins um, and lines like that. But we're all very happy with the way it is. So what we can actually do now is pre-shade. Now, this grey here is quite a dark um, a grey. Normally, I'd use a lighter for a primer. But as I say, it just so happens I've got a lot of this line around. That's why I've gone with it. So what we're going to do, we're going to make the panel lines um, quite dark as well because obviously it's going to need a couple of coats of white to go over this to lighten this all up. So we're using some XF1 flat black. Just check our air pressure. Now this has already been pre-thinned to tell you the truth because it's an old empty bottle. Oh, but getting empty. So what I did, literally I just put some um, thinners into mix, mix, uh, in with it even, giving it a good shake around and there we go, job's done. So what we're going to do, we're just happy with our flow. What we're going to do is obviously pick out the panel lines we want to use. So obviously for this one, usual thing as we do with all these ones, the bigger the panel line and the bigger area you, where you think it is, obviously the heavier the panel line. Um, small little ones, riveted detail, a little bit lighter. So we'll just pick an area. And we'll do it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to prop this up a little bit so it's facing me. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to work our way around that entire panel line area, just like so.
So around the doors as well, we're just giving it a, a bit of shadowing around. So obviously, because there isn't actually going to be, a, there isn't a door here, by giving it the shade around it, it gives that, that sort of dirty effect to it. So we can just pop around that one there. And we'll just go around all the others. And these ones around the rear here we're doing a little bit thicker. So there we go. So there we go. You see, we've got it on there. They're quite big, heavy lines. As I say, we don't want anything too neat, nothing too straight. Bigger ones around the back, to be honest, because it's going to be a little bit more weathered than obviously the front area is. So I'm just going to carry on and do all the other areas. At the same time, obviously, I'm going to do all the, the tails, um, the wings, and the other bits that we've got over here. Okay, so there we go. That's all the pre-shading done. Um, we've whipped everywhere with it. So what we've got to do now is spray an awful lot of white. Now for this I'm going to be using my favourite for spraying white which is Tamiya's um, XF2. I just find it, it covers the best. Um, if I'm honest, other ones you tend to put coat after coat after coat and you still don't see a lot. Now the trouble is we've got to stick a balance now between the two because obviously we're going to put some a lot of white, all the underside is going to be white on the Crusader um, and it takes a lot to cover it. Now the thing is though we've got pre-shading going on here and we're going over a dark primer surface. So what I normally would do, would do is actually put down almost a neat coat first on there and then build up from that but because this is so dark and I'm worried about losing the pre-shading and some of the detail we're going to thin it a little bit more and instead of doing it my normal two coat way or three tops way of doing it we're going to do about four lighter coats and build it up. So what we do well, the top off. Okay, so first of all, we're going to turn the air pressure up a little bit more. So the air pressure is going to go up to about 30 psi and nice bright. We're going to put a drop of thinners in the colour cup first. Okay, uh, that's about a third, and then we're going to go two thirds white. And then what we do, we use our nice clean, he says. Picking up, we'll use the other end and we'll give this a good old mix in the colour cup. Okay, now as I say, this is a lot thinner than I normally spray. So if you see me when I've done uh, videos and things on spraying white, this isn't quite the way I normally do it. This is somewhat different. What I'll do is I'll start on the around the nose area here. So what we do, we just check our flow, we're a bit full up here, okay, so what we're going to do is spray it on, and it's quite speckly the way it's coming out, because it's our first coat. Obviously plenty around the base because the wheel wells, because they're going to be white anyway. Just like so. And already you can see the pre-shading slightly coming through. And obviously these intakes can get a, a good old spray. Down into them to make them all nice. Okay, and we'll just work our way back. building up a layer and what we're going to do is this one is going to be for really the paint to give it to something to grip to and already you can see the pre-shading is coming back so we're quite happy with that. So what we're going to do, we're just going to work our way backwards. And obviously we're making sure we get right in these wheel wells uh, and bits and pieces. I'm 
just make sure to get in there from all angles so you don't get any shadowing. Same with the air brake area. And there we go, there's those wheel wells done nicely like that and we'll just continue working our way back now the engine I know I haven't mastered up um, because I'm going to repaint it to be honest so I'm not that worried about losing the detail and getting some white paint on there because I'm actually going to come back and going to respray the entire thing as a separate when we do the different areas So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to carry on putting this first coat on and then you can join me for putting the second coat of white paint on in a moment. Okay, so as you can see, we're all nice and white now, but the thing is we're quite a bit rough. Now that's because obviously we sprayed a very thick coat on there and it dries a little bit like sandpaper. So what we need to do is sort of give this that nice glossy effect. Now the best way and quickest way to do that is to just overcoat it with a far uh, greater thinned or more thinned amount, which is the normal type of ratio that I do uh, for Tamiya whites, things like that, is round about, put that on, it's about 50-50 with thinners. What we're actually doing is make it a little bit wetter, just so it gives a nice glossy type finish. Now obviously, I know what you're thinking, but it's a matte paint, how can it give a glossy effect? Well that's part of the thing, when you're airbrushing, the thicker your paint and the higher your airbrush, the rougher it is, and it's pretty much like sandpaper this is. So obviously the thinner it is, the wetter the effect and the more smooth you get. So you can get a relatively glossy or smooth finisher, we say, to your paintwork. Obviously it's not going to be, you know, glossy, thick, gloss white. Uh, if we were, we'd just use X2 um, and do it with the gloss finish. But what we need to do is get this so it's got a, a little bit of bite to the paintwork. And we want it to have a little bit of bite to the paintwork. So when we do the weathering and putting the washes on and the bits and pieces like that, actually gives us that nice uh, weathered, dirty, grimy look to the paintwork. And the easiest way to do that is to put the my the Pro Modeler's wash over it uh, with a bit of texture to it. It grips in there and then we're away. So what we do, we'll just blow this through. We've got these other parts here, got little you see grey bits here. This is where I was holding it. So what we can actually do now is come back and touch those in with at the same time. So all we do is lightly spray this on. Now obviously this is not going to have the covering power like the other one did. And it will go wet very, very quickly. So what we do is touch up any areas you just want to touch up. So we'll just move you around these bits. So just wetting them up. There we go, just cut the air and dry these down and then I can stand this one up and we can move on with the other bits. I just dry this off a little bit. Something like that. Now I can show you here on the fuselage front. So obviously what we do, we're just giving this a second coat if you like. And obviously it goes on very wet so you don't want to hang around too long on any particular area. Not worried about the wheel wells so much, so we just give them a, a glancing blow just to shine them up. But certainly, and if you're wondering what height to do the white on the sides, if you go roughly about top of the wheel well, and that's where it is, uh, front to rear, we go. Nice smooth strokes. There we go, and that's done. So I'm just going to carry on with everywhere, um, and then what we can do, we can get the next colour off. So okay, as you can probably see, we've really done some spraying of all these other bits over here. So we've done the white, and we've put the lines in, and all we've got to do on these back ones is the metal work bit. So what we've actually done, we've got some Tamiya uh, XF20, which are quite light because it's very, very similar to the uh, Gull Grey, but the beauty with it is... Uh, being Tamiya, it goes on extremely well uh, and it dries quite quickly. So what we got, we've got some on the go there. What we're going to do is make a mix a little bit thinner than 50-50. So obviously what we've got here is probably 60% thinners to 40% uh, 
paint. Let me just give that a mixer like so. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're just going to have a look at it and work out where we're going to spray. So what we can actually do is not worry too much about obviously the white area because we can come back and we're going to do a little bit of weathering with the white as well to darken it up a little bit, give it a more grimy look the same way as we do um, the top coat which I'll show you in a minute. So checking your references, have a look at them. Um, I have my references here of the particular one and obviously it's a faded white line that runs down. Now depending on your Crusader, some of them up the nose here, it goes to the top of the intake, this one is about midway down and it runs along and if you draw a line really the top of the gear doors, uh, that's about the line where it's going to follow and go through. So what we'll do, we'll flick on the compressor, just like so, check our flow, happy with how it's coming through. Now obviously we don't want to shoot downwards because otherwise we get overspray over the white so we're going to go up. Now you could mask this um, by obviously you could use a little bit of tape along there for a sharper edge. If you wanted a softer edge you could use some of the, um, the actual blue tack worms like this uh, stuff like blue tack the white one stretch that along and use that or on this type of scar you can get away with using sort of freehand quite nicely. So what we're going to do we're going to just whip this line across here at the moment so we're going a little bit higher just along like so so that gives us our line and what we're going to do is we're just going to carry that forward and obviously we'll stop at gun bays and things ok then when we've got the rough line in like that we can then spray in the upper parts and obviously don't worry too much about uh, the engine and the bits as I said we're going to mask those off and we're going to get in there and spray them afterwards Do, I'm just going to stick my finger over the intake because also I don't want stuff going down into the intake. Okay, just working around to the top. pretty straightforward, nothing over the top, but that gives us our demarcation line between the two. Right, I'll get on and do the other half and then we can come back and give okay, us... Okay, so that's the other side done. Now what I'm going to do is tip some of this back in the colour cut, like so. Clean up round the bottom, because obviously you don't want it going towards the needle, otherwise we end up spitting and smattering. What we're going to do is thin this down by about 50%, just like so, and then what we're going to do is put this in the holder here. We're going to stick the lid on that a moment, <coughs> get some white on the go. And what we're going to do is just going to add a few drops of white into the mix. And what this is, is going to give us a sort of bleached effect. Now, I don't know how well you can see it on this one, but it's in between the panel lines and the details like that. And it just gives us a sort of a bleached effect to it as we've done there and it makes the panel lines really stand out you can probably get away with not using a wash you know obviously I will but um, it's not unnecessary to do that so what we do we give this a very good mix because we don't want any lumps of white suddenly scooting out but because it's Tamiya to Tamiya it should mix very very well okay airbrushes for all of these is about 30 psi it's quite high because it's not very detailed work Okay, so what we need to do is just blow this through, and you can probably see it comes out very, very light down here. And then what we do, we just check the air pressures up. So, okay, we're just going to pop around centres of panels and bigger areas, anywhere where there's a, a panel.
because all we're doing is basically bleaching it out like so and as you can see it in there and then what we'll do is we can give this a bleachy coat right the way over um, just to dust it all in and sort of blend it all in so all we do we just take out centers of panels as we go just to give them that sort of bleached used look to it so I'll just carry around uh, doing the rest of it Okay, so as you can see, we've got things uh, nicely masked up on here. Now, I've already done these two bays, and it's what we were saying about. We've masked them up, and then we can spray them afterwards. So the ones we've got to do, we've got to do this big one at the top, which we'll take care of in a minute. And we've got these two bays down here. Obviously, you've got the gun bay and um, the auxiliary power unit bay there, the emergency bay that, that flips open. So we can take care of that. Now, uh, any interior green will do, but it just so happens I've got some uh, H58, which is the guns one, uh, which is the interior green. I've already got it made up and the compressor's running, as you can probably hear. So we'll just check our flow. Quite happy with that. Now, you could overmask it, but I'm quite happy that I'm not going to go too far over. What I've done down here is that so we've masked up to allow to show the panels open. There's a little lip on these, which you'll be able to see. And all we do is gently dust in a coat to start with, and then make sure you come down onto it because of the different angles. And you see it's getting right up inside. The back. I just come in from all the different angles so you don't get any shadows. Of neat plastic, same with the front one. And there we go, that's those two done like that. Now we've got this top one to do, so I just need to move a little bit of the masking out of the way. Over mask there a bit, over complicated it. So then what we can do is we'll just come along and do the top of this bay. And then what we'll do, we pick out some of the little details and go around and we can, we can lighten it a little bit up with some washes and things. Trouble is, with a lot of the parts on the kit, unfortunately you're not going to see much of that. Not much of the work you're going to do in here. There we go, that's that one done in the top. So if we have a, a careful, quick unmask here. We'll just turn that compressor off for a sec. So obviously before I stuck this on as well, I uh, tacked off some of the, the tape, i.e. I put the tape on my hand to get rid of some of the grease, and that way you won't end up peeling all your nice paint work off. Coming along down these edges. Being a bit careful of how we undo all this. And what we do, get under here. And there we go, as you can see, there's those bays done now just like that and it saves a lot of thing of having to put them on and mask up and what we can obviously do we can put a wash on these green areas like that and then just to liven them up a bit and um, once we've got the metal parts all in there which obviously we do with um, metal color paints for the guns and the bits and pieces like that we can do all of those so they're looking all very nice very happy the way it's looking now we're looking get in there slowly but we're surely we're getting there the other thing as well at the same time you can do um, various things like I've got the outside here this is the refueling door um, but all the insides for these doors for the gun doors and the APU don't obviously do the gear well doors because they're going to be white so I'm going to get on and spray up all these last little bits here